Pink Floyd was not a singles band. There wouldn't be another British chart entry until Another Brick in the Wall, Part 2, and that was the tail end of 79. The group's strength lay in their albums and the innovation and experimentation they brought into the studio. These initial releases, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn and A Saucer Full of Secrets, were produced by the late Norman Smith. Nick Mason. Norman was an excellent engineer and had worked with the Beatles. And so I think the idea was very much that in the way that um, George Martin had become the producer for the Beatles, that Norman would now be taken from engineering and become the producer for the new Wonder Band. And I think he was terrific for us for that period because he was a little like George. He was a musician and he did have quite a lot of input. He can quite often be heard on harmony vocals and on backing tracks. He could certainly lay out a chord sequence, suggest different instruments and so on. He was very happy to teach rather than uh, protective in any way. So I think we all have fond memories of Norman until the point at which we then really wanted to uh, fly on our own. And I think there was a point at which Norman really wanted to stick to the sort of, the, I'd say, the pop song concept, whereas we wanted to head off into new territory. Set the controls for the heart of the sun from the 1968 album A Saucer Full of Secrets, which David Gilmour believes is the only track featuring all five members of the band and was released shortly after a turbulent period in their history, which saw the arrival of David and the departure of Sid. The band both recorded and produced a soundtrack album for the film Moore in 1969 and followed this that same year with the production of Umma Gumma with Norman Smith. Norman then took an executive role for their 1970 album, Atom Heart Mother, so the band was arguably taking full charge of production for the first time. And there was a definite sense of musical and production roles blurring with this run of early releases. It was inevitable that a group like Pink Floyd would take command of all aspects of their recording. Ning Mason and David Gilmour. It was always understood that we wanted to be involved and learn. First of all, Norman had been an engineer for the Beatles, so he absolutely understood that the artist should be allowed into the control room. I have to say, there was a certain school of thought at Abbey Road at the time that artists shouldn't be allowed to meddle. And I was reprimanded on one occasion when we were doing Umaguma, uh, where someone saw me actually with my hands on the faders. There was demarcation, was, uh, was still rife, but I think it was absolutely accepted that this was the way forward, that the artists were going to learn the mechanics of the recording industry. It was a gradual transition, really, I think you could say, between there being a producer who actually really did take charge, because Norman Smith sort of took charge, but um, he was very, very open and willing. and. Uh, while we did sit around in the actual studio room being musicians and he did sit in the other room being the producer. There was a lot of jumping to and fro from one to the other and adjusting things and um, he gave us a really good sort of initial instruction into how all the studio stuff worked. And he didn't have such an ego that uh, we couldn't butt in as much as we liked. And his role over the next year or two, two, three years, sort of gradually reduced until he was would just sit around at the back and make the occasional comment but um, mostly just let us get on with it by the time we got to medal it was pretty much just us 